you have a career politician, a washed up politician, a politician's kid, and a journalist. Next on Healthy Republic. Much of the political realm sounds like the start of a bad joke, and much of it actually is a joke. Insert today's Democrat Party. Just this past week, we saw the punchline of what it means to be in the Democrat Party by the actions of a career politician, a washed up politician, a politician's kid, and a journalist. And of course, all this plays out within just two families, the Cuomos and the Clintons, better known as the crazy and catastrophe. Anyone who is looking to understand what the Democrats stand or kneel for this upcoming election can look to these four individuals because their comments this past week represent the true intent of their party. We begin with the journalist, Chris Cuomo, a man who works for a company that claims to be the, quote, most trusted name in news. We can all trust that CNN is pushing its ideological agenda, as demonstrated by Chris's near seven-minute rant in defense of Antifa and the right to punch people with whom they disagree. Because as Chris says, quote, all punches are not equal morally, and fighting against hate matters. In Chris's passionate opinion, Antifa is morally right as long as they are attacking bigots, who Antifa basically calls anyone who does not agree with them. At these same mob attacks, now I won't call them peaceful protests like Chris does, reporters, police officers, bystanders, and others were attacked. Chris uses the language of stamping out political opponents using physical fighting as method to fight hate. His words, not mine. Then we move on over to Chris's big brother, Andrew, the governor of New York, who is currently running for a third term, but who faces a primary challenge from Miranda Hobbs. Sorry, I mean Cynthia Nixon, an actress from HBO's Sex and the City, who said to count her in as a socialist Democrat. Maybe he felt the need to top her stupidity, and he was successful when this past week he said this. We're not going to make America great again. It was never that great. <laughs> I argue the same sentiment for Andrew's governorship as a state nears the top for taxation, which will only increase with that free college that he promised everyone. Now, it's quite possible that Andrew does not understand the term great. The term great does not mean perfect. It simply means to be above average, which is a description the Cuomos are not used to hearing. As a country, America is great. It is above average in comparison to the other 194 countries. And to say that you do not want to make it great again is actively calling for the country to be less than, to not succeed, to not rise above any and all injustices that Cuomo himself claims we need to overcome. But hey, elect him for a third term for more of that same non-greatness. From crazy to catastrophe, or catastrophe avoidance, we have Hillary Clinton, the washed up politician who refuses to fade into retirement. Clinton took to Twitter last week in praise of an 11 year old girl who began kneeling during the Pledge of Allegiance at her school last school year. Clinton watched a Now This video and felt it necessary to praise the girl who copied NFL players in kneeling during the national anthem. The girl said she was inspired by Colin Kaepernick. Clinton's tweet was a reminder to, de to the Democrat base that she supports, quote, the resistance, and that NFL players should continue to kneel as a way to resist the White House. And the apple doesn't fall far from the tree as we have another generation of Clinton speaking the Democrat truth. Last week, Chelsea Clinton told a group of abortion activists at the Rise Up for Roe rally that, in fact, abortions have helped the economy. Because abortion was made legal in 1973, the economy was able to add $3.5 trillion. It is not a disconnected fact to Justice T-shirt of 1973 that American women entering the labor force from 1970 to 2009 added $3.5 trillion to our economy, right? Like the net new entrance of women. That is not disconnected from the fact that Roe became the law of the land in January of 1973. Let's first remember that Hillary decided to have Chelsea and not get an abortion so that Chelsea could grow up and become whomever she wished to be. Now that person is one supporting that women abort their babies in the name of the economy. More than a decade ago, researcher Dennis Howard found that since 1970, the more than 50 million abortions has cost the economy $35 trillion in lost productivity. So murder 50 million babies, make three and a half trillion dollars allow 50 million babies a chance at life, make $35 trillion. This should not be a common core math problem. There is a true answer. Let's recap. The Cuomos and the Clintons told you that America is not a great country to live in, 
that you're a bigot and should be stamped out if you don't agree with them, that you're all racist, and that killing babies is acceptable because, hey, we care about the economy when it involves the murder of innocent lives. Huzzah! And you must remember that the Cuomos and the Clintons are considered mainstream Democrats, the establishment, if you will. They're not even the further leftists who point blank call themselves socialists. Now, I wish that all of this was just one drawn out joke, but this is the reality of the Democrat thinking in 2018. And the further along we get, the crazier and more catastrophic it gets. I just hope we don't all become one sad punchline. Until next time, stay healthy, America.